as we talk about the trending or hot topics from around the league each and every day, and this might be something that we aren't really talking about very much because one of our wonderful researchers here at the network, Lawrence Goldstein, uh, sent us all a stat this morning that was something else, and it had to do with Johnny Gaudreau. Check out his plus minus on the season. He's a plus 54. That's the third best plus minus in the last Three decades, gentlemen. How? Uh, you know, it, it, <laughs> I, mean, I know Calgary is good, but holy. Plus minus. I'll bring this back around. Don't worry, LG. I'm not going to shoot down your stat. Uh, plus minus don't mean stat. anything. I, I never paid attention to plus minus unless you're an extremely high one or extremely low one. Everything else in the middle, it doesn't really matter, you know? Like, I don't know how you feel about it, but like, when you're the high end, like this, the like, extremes that's where it matters. matter, extremes but the averages matter. don't. Not even the averages, I mean, but like, you know, on teams, if you if your whole team has bad plus minus, it, it doesn't really matter, but if you are like 15 yeah. goals less in, in the minus than everybody else, that's a problem. You just, you know, so that's what makes me say, in this situation, that's a significant stat, as you can right. see. I, I think the other thing, and maybe this is part of what you're trying to say, you just can't take plus minus out of context. You got to know what kind of situation the player is in. Is he, uh, you know, middle of the pack guy? He's drawing tough assignments. Like he's checking Sid, he's checking McDavid, or or something like that. It requires yeah. more context. For me, in my role, you know, plus minus was a was, could be a brutal number because yeah. you don't generate a lot of offense, but right, you're going right. to get scored on from time to time. Like you're going to end up in a matchup that you know isn't uh, you know isn't fitting with your your kind of station on the roster and you get scored on from time to time. But, but you know, at the end of the day, I do agree with the points you make. The extremes, there's information there. E even yeah. in between, there's a little information there. But it's an interesting thing. I think the thing that I find most remarkable about it, not that Johnny Gaudreau has been a bad defensive player over the course of his career, but he has had years where we kind of point at his game and we go, He's not that great. He hasn't been that great in the defensive zone. To me, with a guy like Daryl Sutter coming in to, to, to run the bench for the Calgary Flames, knowing Daryl, having played for him, I'm like, Johnny Gaudreau and Daryl might be an oil and water kind of a mix. A lot of people thought that. Because, because we're talking about, you know, a coach's philosophy that a player may or may not fit. So that's what's really kind of impressed me is that there's been incredible buy-in from Johnny Gaudreau. And yes, I think his defensive game has been sound this year, but it also speaks of his team, his line mates and his teammates just in terms of that number 54 doesn't belong to Johnny Gaudreau alone. It's an impressive number, but there's a lot of explanation that goes into why does he have it, right? And he's one point away from 100, yeah. right? He's never, yeah. hit, he's never hit 100 in you know, his career. So, you know, we talk so much, right, about, about players that hit 100 points or more. We talk so much about yeah. best line in hockey, best line in hockey, best this line in hockey. You could argue that Calgary yeah. is in that conversation yeah. for whatever yeah. reason. I'm sure in Calgary they're all over it. Yeah. But in, even here, we probably don't talk about it yeah. as much as we would when we talked about Boston's perfection line and, and the, the top line out in Colorado. But they're there. And, and it's, it's been interesting to watch Daryl Sutter's impact on that team and just how different they look now. And, and Johnny Gaudreau reaping the benefits of De that. Depending on your definition of Hart Trophy, for me, I, I pay a lot of attention and it, it weighs a lot with me as far as what were the expectations of your team where is your team and what has that player done for it? Mm -hmm. This is the MVP, you know, <clears throat> but you, then again, he's not my overall MVP because I think Austin Matthews is. But he's in is, that combo But for this, sure. is, this is where what this team was supposed to be yeah. or what we thought they were supposed to be, yeah. I mean, they're negating all of that. I mean, top, one of the top five, five, five V five lines in the NHL, uh, one of yeah. the top lines, Elias Lindholm and him have been incredible, so. What a, what a season for Johnny. Yeah, and you know, we, we talk about, and as much as we hate to give coaches credit as ex-players for, you know, the success the club is having on the ice, you just can't ignore what Daryl has done. There's yeah. just no way around it. And I think the best way to illustrate that, Jackie, I'm glad you brought up the, the 99 points that Gaudreau is presently at, is, you know, certainly to eclipse uh, 100 this year. But if you go back to another similar season in his past, he had 99 points points over the entire season in 2018-19. Guess what his plus minus was back then? He was just 18. Just plus 18. So give the coach some credit. Here's how he's impacted the overall structure of that team and the buy-in that you've seen from other guys. He's a full, what is that, 40, 36 points better plus minus? That's pretty remarkable.
Yeah, that's the context is important, and that's important. It really is. That's important for him. The flip side of it, and we, we talked about it on yesterday's show, Mo Sider in Detroit, right? Like, he's a minus six, which, like, with no context, you'd be like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But the team, He'll never make the it. Red Wings are, like, <laughs> minus 67 yeah, or something right. ridiculous. So then you're like, right. wow, yeah. how do you have a minus six on that team yeah. when you play 24 minutes a night or whatever it is for Mo Sider? Don't quote me. But uh, <laughs> while, while we're on the Flames here, just to tag it at the end, uh, Elias Lindholm should be a uh, Selkie winner. I yeah. totally agree. He's been agree fabulous. With He's been fabulous. And you ranted on him earlier this year. You listen to the feisty. Honey, I'm that. paying attention out there. At I think the I was time, on the show with you that day. At the time, I think he was one of 11 players in the league to average over two minutes on both the power play and yeah, the penalty yeah. kill in the yeah, whole NHL. I'm sure that's still true. Uh, but if not, how would you know? All right, uh, let's talk about the Abs, a team the Flames may face if they go deep in the postseason. And Colorado just continuing to prove themselves despite injuries, despite anything that you want to throw at them. And, and that's certainly been the case recently with injuries to Landis Cobb and uh, Nazem Kadri. Yeah, I mean, we, we know that they're built well. We thought they are built well, but you don't know if you really are until you hit these bumps, right? And they've mm -hmm. had injuries at different times from different players. We know Nathan McKinnon missed a big chunk of time, and what happened during that time? Nazem Kadri was throwing himself into the MVP race at that time. Uh, they've, they've been missing a lot of players at different stretches, but they just simply step up. They have more guys that step up, more opportunities, and guys taking advantage of them. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that that shows this team's for real. They got some great depth. They really do. They really do. They uh, and, and to think this is a group that started off the season four and six out of the gate. They stumbled out of the blocks and, you know, separate that out and look at the tear they've been on since that time. There really have been very no no valleys to speak of with respect to Colorado. And there have been other clubs around the league. Vegas comes to mind as an example. You know, very talented clubs built to go deep and we all thought they would. But it was really injuries that unhinged the Vegas Golden Knights. And, you know, the, the Colorado has been very, very similar in that respect. Key injuries to, to cal high caliber players, impactful players, and this club really hasn't missed a beat. A lot of that to me, uh, the explanation falls at the feet of uh, one Darcy Kemper. He's been really, really solid with the exception of, you know, again, that block of games right out of the gate where everybody was a little out of sync. But if you go back to, I think, Jackie, it was December the 8th. middle. Okay, middle. For of Kemper? Yeah. Yeah, December 8th. December 8th, there was like a two-month window going forward from December 8th where he didn't have a regulation loss. Yeah, Did these are his numbers since December regulation. 8th. And yeah. There's a lot of ones on that board. Really so. remarkable. Really remarkable. Has a lot to do with the club in front of him. But, you know, from time to time, even Colorado breaks down. And Kemper's been been really, really solid. Haven't missed a beat in Group Bauer's absence. And you know what? I've been, I was the first person early on, the first half of the season, to be like, yeah, I don't know about the goaltending like yeah. Kemper's not necessarily proven in the postseason is Kemper going to be the guy like I was like leader of that charge and I've been completely I've completely changed my opinion over the last couple of months for Darcy Kemper and back when you were saying that I was telling you you <laughs> got to give it a window of time see how yes, the goaltender evolves behind this group that he's playing but you know for. I have no patience I'm all about <laughs> exactly. recency bias Show me now I'm recency bias baby <laughs> all the day what have you done for me lately and right now Darcy Darcy Kemper has been lights out. Five shutouts uh, leads the league Remarkable. since December 8th Remarkable. as well. I believe it's going to be Pavel Francouz uh, for Colorado tonight, but got to give Kemper his love uh, uh, while we can. What do, you, what do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, Kemps has been he's been awesome, and you got to give a lot of credit to this organization. They make shrewd decisions. They mm -hmm. make smart decisions. Mm -hmm. They project the right way. They draft the right way. Uh, they, they make these moves because they have a lot of players that haven't gotten paid yet, and it gives them some flexibility. But that was a gutsy play. If you go back to last summer, Philip Grubauer was a Vesna finalist last year. He was a Vesna finalist, mm -hmm. and they Crazy. let him go. Why did they let him go? Because it was either him or Gabe Landeskog, and mm -hmm. they decided we got to we want to resign our captain. So he goes. They put all their they put their bet on Darcy Kemper. Darcy Kemper is a heck of a goaltender. He played with him in Minnesota. He's got all the tools, but that's a gutsy move. Like think about Big that. Time. You know what I mean? You're, you're getting rid of top three goalie in the yeah. league to have some. Uh, Goalie come in who's been very good in his career but is unproven. And so I give Darcy Kemper a lot. Of, that's a tough situation for him as well because when you're going into a situation and it's like this is, you know, everything or bust for this yeah. team. And you're in that polarizing position. That's a lot of pressure for the of kid. Of course. I mean, we are all heard Nathan McKinnon when they were ousted from the postseason last year, right? Very frustrated. Yeah. I haven't won 
crap. I'm not allowed to say the other word uh, since since we've been here. We haven't won crap. This is a team that, that feels the pressure of expectation, and certainly after this season, we'll feel that going into the postseason as well. But Darcy Kemper uh, has been absolutely solid uh, elsewhere in the West. The Vegas Golden Knights, a team we thought was a shoe in for the postseason, yeah. may not make it. I mean, that is where we're at with the Vegas Golden Knights. Everything that could go wrong seems to have gone wrong for Vegas this season. There they are on the outside looking in. Two points back at the Stars in terms of, of the wild card. And then in the Pacific, it's the Kings and the Oilers that they're chasing. Yeah, it, I, I've. this is something I think it's playing more and more into. It's coming to fruition that the one team, if they're going to get in Vegas, it's it's the LA Kings. Because that what you mentioned, it, they've got a game in hand on the Kings. Those two teams in the Central that are in the wild card, Dallas and Nashville, they've got the games in hand, so right. it's not really boding right. well for Vegas. So uh, I think that L.A. The path is through the Pacific. The path is through the Pacific. And you look at the upcoming schedule here at Vegas, and, and this is really how it's been for them for a while. They've been playing non-playoff teams for the most yeah. part, and they've been getting wins. That I'm not this crazy. you got to just get wins. I don't care who it's against. Or yeah. way, you got to find ways to get it. So yeah. they're, they're still up against it. But I find it uh, very interesting because um, – it, that last night's game of Edmonton in L.A., the fact that Edmonton beat L.A. in regulation. Vegas was cheering. Vegas was fist pumping. Yeah. They were jacked. And here's the L.A. schedule. But uh, I don't know, Stu. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know who's going to make it. You know what I think is really interesting? So I, I took a look at these two teams once we started talking about it today. Now, Vegas is on a, about a 7-3 and three tear right now. Uh, you know, given given their last 10 games. If we project that's the way they're going to finish out the season, that's another 14 points for them. They finish with 96 points. Yeah. L.A., by contrast, is kind of middling. They're like 500 hockey over their last 10. If we give them five of the – give them five in the, it wins in the nine games they have left, that gives them points, 10 points, and they arrive at 96. That would be a deadlock at 96. That just an example of – you know, a lot can shift, obviously, but just projecting yeah. out that way. Uh, Vegas right now has more regulation wins. The tiebreaker goes to them if the point if if the tie did in fact ensue. But just projecting kind of what they're doing right now. Fast forward, they both end at 96. It's a race. It's yeah. a race. But I'm you got my attention when you started talking about this because I was really focused on the wild card in Vegas. It really was a little shot, good. especially and when it's, it can still do it, but it's a lot harder. Nashville's yeah. got to get hit by a bus. Yeah. Dallas has to fall off the pace. Yeah. Um, so the, the the realistic path, the more likely path, is up through the Pacific. It'll be very interesting to watch. And for the Kings, seven games remaining against non-playoff teams, right? And the thing about L.A., and, and I have no idea how they've been able to do this because they've dealt with a plethora yeah. of injuries to big-name players as well, but... It seems like all season long, for the most part, they've just hung around that 2-3 spot. Yeah, like, they've yeah. been very consistently staying there. And I know Edmonton having a really bad stretch and Vegas having their disaster of a season has helped that. But there's a reason the Kings have not really faltered despite all of that. They have hung yeah. on to that spot. So... I don't know that they're going to give it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just uh, feel like the Kings, may, maybe they're not going to go on a deep run in the postseason, but I, I just can't see them missing at this point. It'll be interesting to see. But, It'll be interesting to see. Unrelated to that specific race, do you find this a little puzzling? Like, every year, there's usually three or four teams that are right around the cutoff line, and from – you know, the 14 games left on up to the last three or four, we're talking about these incredible races. It's pretty much buttoned down yeah. with the exception of this one that yeah. we're focusing on right here. Just different from past the years. Been it's been a little forever. more settled. Yeah, it's just it been a lot years. more settled than we've yeah. seen in the past. It's I also think, too, when you look at the two conferences, like the path to the final is so much different tougher in the east i think than in the mm, west yeah. so that's going to be I, well, I wonder if that will come into play although there were more western conference teams on somebody's power rankings today hey, i don't know well, if that matters let, i don't know if that let's chuck this out there too of the eight teams <laughs> making it in the playoffs uh in the east seven of them should have over 100 points seven teams well at one point like in the east in the east yeah at one nuts. point yeah. seven of the top 10 teams in the entire league based on points percentage were from the east yeah, yeah. which is i feel like the playoff cutoff line is kind of nudging up there yeah. by a couple of points too it's just like the caliber of playoff if, teams it's, it's a harder it's a harder group to qualify for if vegas misses let's say vegas misses what's a team that you think 
could shock people in the postseason. Mm. Like, who could be a, this year's Montreal? I'm not saying go all the way to the final. I'm just saying even in the first or second round, maybe I think the a little wild. upset special. We get wild? it every year. I think the Wild have the yeah. makings to do something. Yeah. 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 Hmm. You know, uh, Nashville did this back in 17. Yeah. I think they're a better team today than they were back then. They might surprise some folks, too. All right. Well, I'll tell you one yeah. thing. I don't think Pittsburgh wants to see the Rangers in the first round. <laughs> no. Uh, based on what we've seen, although no Crosby last night. Uh